city of Alva Palms is preparing for lots of crowds and traffic for this Memorial Day weekend. Police Chief Kevin Cornett tells me what you can expect if you head to the beach this weekend for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Alva Palms Police Chief Kevin Cornett, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Glad to talk to you again. Yes, sir. You know, the last time I saw you was over at uh, City Hall a couple of weeks ago. And I know that you are extremely busy. And obviously, this is Memorial Day weekend. In fact, you told uh, Live 5 News recently that, you know, the city is preparing for what could be the biggest Memorial Day crowd ever this weekend. How are you preparing for that mentally? Uh, mentally, it's, uh, it's really just making sure that we've got everything checked off. You know, the, the good news for us is that we are accustomed to seeing the crowds significantly increase. You know, our population is roughly 5,000 permanent residents, and it is not uncommon to see that number jump during the summer summer days or weekends to 30 to 40,000 people. So it's something we're used to. So we bring in additional personnel. We've got additional firefighters that are going to be on, on site that will be assigned to the beach for any calls out there. We'll have additional police officers assigned to traffic, assigned to the beach, assigned to parking, and all those different areas. It, it, we we kind of get used to doing this. It's just going to be bigger. Bigger. And, and wh how, what was the largest Memorial Day crowd before this? You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, since I've been here, the, the crowd last year, it wasn't small by any means, but it was not as big as 20, 2019. Uh, 2019 was fairly large, but we, because of the experience we had during spring break, I think that was a an indicator to us that so many people that have been in their homes for COVID and they've been kind of told you, you can't go out and do things. And those restrictions are loosening up now when people are just ready to get out and the beach is a safe place to be, you know, the beach is a place that's outdoors. You've got room to spread out. Uh, we would encourage people when they do come to the beach to spread out, you know, don't everybody seems to clump up into one area and there's, yeah. there's a lot of beach here, spread out a little bit and enjoy it. That's exactly right. And, and speaking of which, as you talk about pedestrians, will it be any pedestrian barricades along Ocean Boulevard to keep pedestrians safe on the sidewalk? So it won't necessarily be pedestrian barricades, but what we do is we put cones up on Ocean Boulevard to keep traffic going in one direction. If we don't do that, we start to see a lot of U-turns in the middle of it. That delays traffic. That's a little more dangerous for pedestrians who are trying to cross at those areas. So we do block that off to keep traffic flowing in one direction on both sides of Ocean Boulevard. And will any emergency access lanes be blocked for emergency vehicles or on only certain avenues of boulevards on the island? So all of our emergency accesses are, are meant to be open for vehicles like emergency vehicles. There really should not be any parking in front of them to block them. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we are doing, and they're actually putting it up right now, is that we have learned over over the past couple of years that when we have busy weekends like this, it is beneficial for us to take when you get in onto the beach from that beach access, those emergency lanes, we'll put cones up or little uh, plastic uh, rods to really keep a, what we call an emergency lane open. That way, if we have a call for service, our ATVs or our trucks are able to get out there and stay in that emergency lane. So if you come out and visit and you see those, please don't put your beach chair in your tent right in the middle of those, those emergency lanes. People do it. It's kind of hard to see what it is. And we'll typically come through and just say, hey, this we leave this open for calls. Exactly right. And I, I know you probably mentioned this a couple of times before, but will an extended traffic pattern be implemented if traffic conditions warrant the use of such pattern? So what we've done, um, and they've been doing it way before I got here. To, today is my two-year mark for being here. And we have, since I've been here, we take 14th Avenue. That's where you come off of the, the connector. Right. Uh, we block that off and we do that because the traffic building up to turn into County Park will go back and wind up blocking that intersection at Palm Boulevard and the connector. And that is a critical intersection that needs to be cleared for emergency response. That's EMS, fire and police. So we do block 14th Avenue off and we force drivers to turn right or left down Palm Boulevard. And that will be in effect. It'll be going into effect today. Speaking of Palm Boulevard, uh, since last summer, the Alpha Palms has added dozens of new parking spots to Palm Boulevard. But obviously, you said those spots will fill up very quickly due to the Memorial Day weekend. Where exactly will officers be placed to ensure safe parking? So we have beach service officers that will be assigned to zones throughout the island. They are there to help with parking enforcement, but also to help people who have questions. We understand that 
that you're driving down and you want to get to the beach and I have kids. So I get this. You're driving and you've got the kids in the back going, mommy, are we there yet? Can we stop? And they can, uh, my kids will go crazy. And, and, you know, if I don't find a parking spot, they're going to, they're going to have a rough day with me. They're, they're going to make sure I remember this. So I know what it's like. And these yellow shirted beach service officers are there to help you too. When you have a question, if you're not sure if it's a parking spot, stop one of them and ask them, you know, I'd rather you ask, and take a few moments for that, as opposed to you park somewhere because you're making your own spot and you want it for the hundred dollar parking ticket. Exactly right. And, and what will be those exact parking fines? So anywhere along Palm Boulevard, if you park within a fifteen feet of a fire hydrant or in an area that is marked for no parking, it is a hundred dollar fine. When you're on Front Beach or in the municipal lots and you're paying for time, if you have a meter violation, it can be a fifty dollar parking ticket. And so for people who are actually waiting to get in those parking spaces, how does your department make sure that the vehicles are not actually blocking the road? So the great thing about the new parking on Palm Boulevard is that they are clearly marked. They have concrete barriers at the front of them and they have white lines painted down the side. It, it's really meant to make it really easy to know where you're supposed to park. What we would ask is that when you park in those spots, pull as far forward as you can. Our BSOs will be out, and if they see somebody just pulling in that doesn't pull all the way up, they'll just say, hey, do you mind pulling all the way in? Because if everybody pulls all the way up, there's enough room that when they back out of that angled spot, they can back onto the shoulder and not into the roadway, and that keeps it safer to park on Palm Boulevard. Hmm. And, and will there be any restrictions on golf carts or mopeds? So mopeds, there really won't be any restrictions uh, other than normal state laws. Golf carts will be the same thing. They're state laws, but what we do... We do see a lot of people that rent homes that find that the rental house may have a golf cart. They may not know our state laws pertaining to golf carts. They cannot drive down Palm, Palm Boulevard in a golf cart. Mm. Uh, it has to be a, a low-speed vehicle, which has a license plate through the DMV. Your golf carts have to be registered with the DMV. They have to have proof of insurance. They have to be driven by a licensed driver. We see a lot of people that are young operating these, uh, and that is a violation if they don't have a driver's license. And coming back over to you, obviously you spent two years at the Alba Palms as the police chief, and now you've been added as the public safety officer, uh, public safety chief. What is that like for you? It's a lot. It, you know, it's, I always enjoy new things and I enjoy learning new things. And there's been a lot of that. Uh, and it's maybe not the best uh, phrase to use, but I'm, I'm drinking water from a fire hose at this point for the fire department, learning what they're doing and, and how those operations go. The good thing is, when I first got here and realized that this was a smaller community, I really reached out to the fire department and said, I want to help. I want to learn. So well before this public safety thing ever happened, I was already telling the fire guys, teach me how to pull a hose off of a truck for you. Tell me how I can show up to a fire call and I can help you. And that's the stuff I'm, I'm really learning. And we were already embedded in that before this, this took place. Uh, but it's, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. And, and we'll see where it goes. Are you stretching thin by chance? No, the good thing is we have deputy chiefs in the fire department. We have deputy chiefs in the police department, and they're very competent individuals that have been doing this for a long period of time. I would say if I did not have them, yes, I would be, if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out. But because I have competent leaders in both departments right now, everything is operating smoothly. Uh, there Now, the fire department is learning me as a leader, and I'm learning how they operate. So there's a little bit of a learning curve there, but I will tell you, they are professionals. The fire department are professionals. The police department's full of professionals, and they're all doing a wonderful job. Uh, I tell, told our firefighters when this all started that, hey, regardless of what has happened, regardless of politics, regardless of anything else, their job doesn't change. You know, Our job is to save people, to render aid, to fight fires, and none of that changes regardless of anything else taking place. And so with that, they're really good at it, and, and we want to keep pushing them to do the great job that they do. And what it occurs right now when it comes to crime? I'm sorry, what was that? What it occurs when it comes to crime on the Alba Palms? So our crime tends to pick up any time that the beach season starts. And Memorial Day really does turn out to be that time for us. And some of the crimes that we typically see are property crime related. People not locking doors of their cars and checking door handles. So we really want to tell all of our residents, anybody that's visiting, you know, that is our biggest thing that we see. Please lock your doors. Uh, we realize that Isle of Palms has a reputation to be one of the safest cities, uh, but that doesn't mean that we can make it easy for criminals to commit crimes. So let's please lock our doors. 
Uh, and, it, you know, we tell people all the time, if you see something that looks strange, say something. Uh, a lot of times we'll have something happen and, and you'll hear neighbors or somebody say, well, I, I did see something, but I just didn't want to bother the police department. We're, we're here regardless and we're working. So call us. It's not a bother. I'd rather you interrupt our lunch or something like that so that we can prevent a crime from happening than for you to ignore it and just say, you know, I saw it later on and then your neighbor might be a victim of a crime. Yeah. And what are those crime trends that you are worried about in the future? So obviously some are, like I said, the property crimes increase. We're, we kind of monitor that. We start to move our officers into those neighborhoods so that we can prevent and deter those crimes from taking place. Some of the other crimes that we've noticed recently, if you've been watching council meetings, is that we've had uh, an upward tick in DUIs. Uh, our DUI charges have significantly increased over the past couple of years. Uh, in 2020, our DUIs charges doubled compared to 2019. And we are already seeing a trend in 2021 that may put us over that number from last year. Uh, and so uh, we are stepping up efforts in the DUI enforcement area. There will be checkpoints this weekend on the island in the evening hours on Palm Boulevard. And we'll be looking for those individuals that are driving impaired. And that's going to be across the low country, uh, across the state in general. Law enforcement will be cracking down on DUI and impaired driving. Uh, some of the other things that we're monitoring on the island are going to be uh, drug-related crimes where people are just, we've seen an influx in people bringing drugs to the island. And uh, that is not okay. It is not acceptable. You will go to jail. Um, and we are proactively enforcing those laws. Well, Chief uh, Kevin Cornett, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups, and hopefully I can get you on before 4th of July. Absolutely. It was great to talk to you again. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Have a great day. Likewise. You too.